Hello everybody, my name is Fulbert Baudouin. So, this is the final part of this unit. We are going to look at the practical applications, and this is where we're going to present concrete examples of the PNID. The first example is very easy. You are to define the different basic tagging conventions shown on this slide. PT means a pressure sensor with a transmitter that converts the raw signal at the output of the sensor, the measured value, to a normalized signal from 4 to 20 mA current loop. In general, this signal is transmitted to the controller. LE means a level sensor but only for the primary element. I mean the sensor, the raw signal. Which kind of raw signal depend of the sensor use? PCV means a control valve which regulates pressure. The first letter is P for pressure. Because there is no line inside the circle, all these devices are located somewhere in the field, probably close to the general area shown on the PNID. TAH means an alarm sounds when the temperature is higher than a given threshold and for the PAL, an alarm sounds when the pressure is lower than the defined pressure. The line inside the circle indicates that both alarms are located on the main control panel near the control room. FV means a valve or control valve in order to regulate the flow. We don't have any information about the kind of valve. In general, this information is given by the valve symbol and not the tagging. PY means a converter or transducer, probably an IP transducer close to the valve, no line inside the circle, to convert electrical signal to pneumatic signal. Finally, TC means a controller to regulate the temperature. This controller is a programmable logic controller a PLC because the symbol is a diamond within the square. This PLC is located on the main control panel. In this example, we want to control the temperature of the process flow at the outlet of the heat exchanger. The principle of this process is as follows. It works because heat naturally flows from higher temperature to lower temperature. Therefore, if a hot fluid and a cold fluid are separated by the heat conducted surface, it can be transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. In this heat exchanger, steam is used to warm up the process flow, and the steam is hence cooled down through the heat exchanger and comes out as a condensate. In this control loop, the manipulated variable is the inlet flow of steam and the measure variable is the outlet temperature of the process flow. First of all, we need a temperature sensor at the process flow outlet of the heat exchanger, which indicates and transmits the measured value as an electrical signal to a controller. The controller is often a recorder as well to record all the measured values. The controller then sends an electrical signal to an IP converter indicating how much the valve should open or close. The IP converter will then convert this signal into a pneumatic signal, which in turn gets sent to the pneumatic control valve so that it can regulate the opening. The temperature control valve will be a fail close valve, FC because if there is a problem and the valve doesn't receive a signal, it is better to stop heating the process flow rather than take the risk of overheating it. Let's have a look at this line now. All lines with regard to the transit signal are dot lines for the electrical signal at the, at the input and output of the controller and a slash line for the pneumatic signal to supply the diaphragm casing of the valve. The different symbols used show that the IP converter, controller and sensor are located in the field and that the nature of the controller is indicated by an hexagon, which means a computer is used to control the process. The number of, the, of this control loop is 1 to 5. In the third example, we want to control the temperature and the pressure in the, inside the reactor. Chemical reactors are vessels designed to contain chemical reactions. A chemical reaction is a process that results in the conversion of chemical substances. Substances initially involved in a chemical reaction are called reactants. 
Reactant within a reactor usually liberates or absorbs heat during processing. In order to maintain the reactor contents at the desired temperature, it has to be added or removed by a cooling jacket or cooling pipe. Heating or cooling coals or external jackets are used for heating and cooling batch reactors. Heat transfer fluid passes through the jacket or coals to add or remove heat. In our case, cooling water is used due for the exothermic reaction. So, the valve on the cooling water exit is a failed open valve because if the valve doesn't receive a pneumatic signal, we must be sure to avoid the worst case scenario, that is to say the temperature in the reactor being too high. To avoid high temperature, we have to enable the maximum flow of cooling water, hence opening the valve. The valve on the reactant feed is a field closed valve because if the valve doesn't receive a pneumatic signal, we must be sure here again to avoid the worst case scenario, that is to say the pressure in the reactor is too high. To avoid high pressure, we have to limit the reaction and therefore no introduce more reactant to the reactor. The structure of both control loops are shown on this slide. In this P and ID diagram, the chemical process described here is based on the hydrodealkalization of toluene to produce benzene as discussed in part 1. The feed for distillation colon reaches the middle of the colon, in this case, a mixture of toluene and benzene. The product leaving the top of the colon is called the distillate. Vapor leaving the top of the colon passes through a heat exchanger, called the condenser, where it is partially or totally condensed. The resulting liquid is temporarily held in the accumulator or reflux drum. A liquid stream is withdrawn from the drum and returned to the top tray of the colon as reflux to promote separation. The base of the colon is typically used as a reservoir to all liquid leaving the bottom tray. A heat exchanger, the reboiler, is used to boil this liquid. The resulting vapor is returned to the colon. The exercise consists in firstly ident identifying the different control loop in place in this process and, secondly, in giving the measure variable, the manipulated variable and the type of alarm for each control loop. Before that, you can see on this diagram two heat exchangers, a vessel and a distillation colon. Distillation is a process in which a liquid or vapor mixture of two or more substances is separated into its component fractions of desired purity by the application of removal of heat. Distillation is based on the fact that the vapor of boiling mixture will be richer in the components that, the, that have lower boiling points. Therefore, when this vapor is cooled and condensed, the condensate will contain more volatile components. At the same time, the original mixture will contain more of the less volatile material. You can see five control loops on this P and ID diagrams. The first one concerns the regulation of the level inside the vessel. A primary sensor is put on the vessel and a transmitter is associated to it in order to have a normalized electrical signal for the controller, 4 to 20 mA current loop. Controller, IP converter and alarm are located on the main control panel near the control room. Both alarms involved are a high level alarm for LAH and a low level alarm for LAL. No indication is given for the valve, so we can only say that this valve is a pneumatic control valve. In this control loop, the measured variable is the level in the vessel and the manipulated variable is the out outlet flow at the bottom of the drum. The other control loop are structured in exactly the same way. You can see here a control loop for the pressure into the vessel. The measured variable is the pressure at the outlet of the drum and the manipulated variable is the outlet flow at the top of the drum. Both alarms are PAL and PAH. The distillation column has three control loops. The reflux flow, the temperature at the bottom of the column, and the level within the column. 
As you can see, all controllers can record data such as the measured variables, the output data for control valve, etc. Some sensors are put into the process just to have a look at particular physical data. For example, TI at the top of the column, it is just an indicator and and is not included into a control loop. Based on the different parts of this unit, you now have a solid feel for what P and ID are, the purposes they serve, the limitation, the supporting document requirement, and now a pretty solid grasp of the symbology used. I do hope that you will take a look at the examples provided here, as they will greatly help you in understanding this unit.